The waveform chart can be accessed from the graph subpalette on our controls palette. In the top left corner, we select waveform chart, and when we place this object down on the front panel, we see that we have a chart type window which appears on our front panel. Let's take a look at the block diagram and notice there's an important point about the waveform chart, that the terminal itself is actually exactly the same as that of a standard numeric indicator. What this means is that the waveform chart is merely a way of representing a scalar numeric. Let's build a quick example which is going to allow us to put data into our waveform chart. We're going to use a while loop. We're going to create a while loop and encompass our waveform chart. Create a control on the stop button and place down a numeric random number and wire that into our chart. We're also going to place a short delay inside the while loop with a 250 millisecond constant. So notice now when we run this plot, we're generating random numbers, but they're being plotted and recorded in the waveform chart. And of course, when we push the stop button, the plotting finishes. Let's right-click on the chart and investigate some of the options here. First, notice that there's an option here called Chart History Length. Right now, the number of data points in the buffer is set to 1024. Let's reduce that number down to 50. Let's now run the example again. This time, we'll allow the data to collect 50 points, and we'll observe the behavior once that buffer has been filled. What we're going to observe as the waveform chart exceeds its 50-point buffer is that older data points are automatically overwritten with newer ones. And in fact, we have the behavior of a scrolling chart at this time. If I stop the chart, I can in fact change that behavior. If I right-click from the Advanced menu, choose Update Mode, there are two other modes. First, the currently selected mode is called Strip Chart. This has the behavior of scrolling the window as new data is collected. The next is Scope Chart. The Scope Chart behaves much like an oscilloscope screen in that once the screen has been filled, in other words, when data gets to the right-hand side, the screen is automatically emptied and then data begins plotting again from the left. The third behavior, if we choose again from right-clicking and then picking the Advanced menu, Update Mode, Sweep Chart, we'll see that sweep chart has a similar behavior, except that there is a red line which indicates the new data and old data is left on the screen, but we do not have the scrolling behavior that we have of the strip chart. In addition, there are several ways to navigate the data on a chart. If we right-click on the chart from the visible item submenu, let's first display the scale legend. The scale legend appears by default below the graph, although it can be moved, and allows us to label and set up the parameters for each of our axes. Right now our horizontal axis is time, but it could just as easily be, for example, sample number. And when we change the text there, the same information is reflected on the x-axis. Being amplitude, we could write voltage or any other parameter. The leftmost of these three icons here allows us to determine whether that particular axis is auto-scaled or not. With the lock icon in the unlocked position, that means that auto-scaling is not locked on. When we click it on, the graph is automatically auto-scaled in the X direction. If the lock is unlatched, then we can use the auto-scale X button to cause an auto-scale to be performed on that axis. The third icon allows us to specify the format and precision of the numbers of that particular axis, as well as determining whether the scale is visible and whether the label is visible. Also, we can define the grid color for that particular axis. And notice how we get our standard color palette, and whatever we pick is applied to that particular axis. This indicator here is the plot legend. Here we can specify the name 
of each plot, and also we can specify the format of each plot. There's a context menu which pops up when we click on the representation of the plot. The first lists several common plots, for example, standard point styles, line styles, and bar styles, which might be commonly chosen. We can also specify the color, the line style, whether it's a solid or dashed line, and the line width. Also specify whether the plot is anti-aliased, which improves the appearance, but certainly degrades the performance of your VIs. Furthermore, we can define the type of plot, whether it is a bar or a line plot. If it is a bar plot, we can specify where the fill base is, In addition, we can define how lines are interpolated, essentially how the dots are connected for our plot. We can specify the point style. And we can also select which scale belongs to each plot. Further, if we right-click from Visible Items and select the Graph Palette, the Graph Palette allows us to access our cursors, our zoom tool, and our scrolling tool. Let's first discuss the Zoom tool. When we click on the Zoom tool, we have access to six choices. The first allows us to define a zoom region by drawing a rectangle right in the plot. The next allows us to zoom only the x-axis by choosing a region. The next allows us to zoom only the y-axis by clicking and dragging to define a region. This next one will undo a zoom and show the full scale of the plot. And the last two allow us to interactively zoom in and out by clicking and holding the cursor on a plot and undo again to go back. The scroll window hand allows us to move the plot just by dragging. The leftmost tool here is the cursor tool, which we're going to talk about more when we discuss waveform graphs.